Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we're going to be making a custom figure based on Disney's The Black Hole. Now, when Mego produced the uh, toys for that movie, they did a really fantastic job. In fact, they covered pretty much every character that you see in the film, even if some of those are pretty hard to find, like old Bob and Star and the humanoid. All of the characters that you see in the film were made in a really high standard. And I watched the movie again recently and saw that there were a few uh, areas that maybe we could make a custom custom figure from. Right at the start of the movie you see Hans Reinhardt in the middle here. He's wearing a different outfit so that's one option. We also see the probe ship pilot at one point and that is a different version of the humanoid but the humanoid figure is incredibly hard to find. I don't actually have one here as you can see. And then there are two other outfits that I actually saw and thought immediately ah oh, those are ones that we can turn into customs. There's a scene where Dan Holland and Vincent rescue Kate McRae from uh, the Sentinels. They're trying to do an operation on her and during that scene they uh, steal the costume off a couple of the humanoids and you see them dressed up in this humanoid disguise that they burst out of the door and have a bit of a battle with the uh, sentries and I thought that those outfits were actually ones that we could sort of work on and make a couple of custom figures. So that's the plan for today's video. I'm going to take a couple of spare figures and we are going to make some custom humanoid outfits for them so that they can be disguised as humanoids but I want those outfits to be removable and also in the style that they would have been made back in the sort of late 70s and early 80s. So let's get on with the project and see what we can make. So so there are going to be two stages to this project because there are sort of two very different things that we need to make. The first is obviously a cape. We've got to make a cape that sits over the figure that has access to both the arms so that the arms can sort of come out of either holes or slits or something like that. And then we, the second part of this uh, project is we need to make a mask that goes over the face, a little sort of silver faceplate to make them look like the humanoids. So the first thing to do is the cape. And I was thinking, how can I sort of start this cape off and use the basis of another figure to uh, get going? And the Emperor's Royal Guard is a cape that I've made a lot of, sort of long time ago and in fact there's a pattern on toyploy.com if you want to uh, make your own replacements of these and I thought that would be a good starting point because it does actually hang quite nicely. We've got a slit on one side for the arm. We could easily put another slit on that side for the other arm. So that was my sort of initial thought. In fact I printed out one of those and made a few little modifications to it, even added an extra armhole and I made this version. Now it doesn't actually look too bad but uh, when you put it on the figure I've sort of think it's not the greatest of capes. It works but it doesn't do everything that I wanted it to do. You can see we've got the armhole here so one arm does sit out. We have the armhole on this side so again you can get that arm out for holding a weapon and we've got a place for the mask, a little hood on. But it doesn't look as good as I was hoping. So that was my sort of first prototype. It was a good starting point but it didn't actually do all that I wanted. So I had a look at some other cape that I've made and I thought this would be the uh, next good option. So this is the uh, Luke Jedi Knight figure and his cape is made in a completely different way but hangs fairly similarly. So it hangs over the shoulders and it also has a hood. And this is another one that I've made a few times. So there is a pattern on toyploy.com. I printed that out and had a second go and was able to make this. So this is a slightly modified version of that cape and this one actually works a whole lot better. Let's put a figure in and I'll show you what I mean. So the figure goes in exactly the same way. You put, pop it in like that. We've got a slot for one arm on one side. I can rotate that round. And then we have a, a slit on the other side for the other arm to come through. But you can see this hangs a whole lot better. So this isn't exactly the same as the Luke Jedi cape. I did a whole load of modifications, but I was able to get this. And I think that is going to be what we are going to work with. Now that I have that, I actually took one of the uh, prototypes apart and I was able to make a pattern. I've taken this into uh, Photoshop and worked it up. So this is my pattern for that cape. It doesn't look anything like the Luke Jedi cape pattern. If you uh, compare the two, there is very little similarity but it is based on that as a starting point. So we are going to use this to make a couple of different capes for these two figures. Let's get started with cutting and I'll show you the material that I'm going to use as well. Now that we have this pattern that we can get cutting out uh, and this pattern will be available on uh, toyploy.com. So if you want to make this custom yourself, uh, go there and grab the file. Uh, we need to sort out some fabric though. If you look at the movie, the uh, capes that the uh, humanoids wear are a sort of charcoal gray. When they made the toys for the toys, they used a sort of fawny brown and I don't really like that fawny brown. I want to get to as close to uh, charcoal grey as I can. So I've been 
buying a few different types of uh, toy knit fabric. I've got this, which is black. I just think black is way too dark. I've also got this sort of navy blue, which is a little bit better, but it's so obviously blue, uh, I don't want to go with that. And then I finally found uh, this grey, which is what I am going to go for. This is a sort of dark grey. It's still not quite dark enough, but I think it will work quite nicely. In fact, the prototypes that I made, I was using this grey, which is just a little bit lighter. So um, it's not quite there, but I think it will do the job. Uh, and this uh, is called Toynet, and it's the same sort of fabric that they used on uh, Jedi era Star Wars figures. It's really easy to work with and I think it's, it's very in keeping with the sort of vintage style of the figures. Uh, I will put a link in the description as to where you can get this. So we're going to be using this. I've got a few uh, sort of different pieces of it so I, I should have plenty. And what we're going to do is stick this pattern onto the rear side of the fabric. This pattern is designed uh, to be stuck on the rear because when you fold it all together and we sort of fold it into the right shape all of these holes and pieces will line up. So that little marking there is where, where the uh, left arm of the figure comes through and when you rotate it around you'll end up with a little slit here. So first thing we've got to do is cut this out. So I've already stuck some double sided tape on the back of this and I'm just going to stick this onto the fabric so that it holds in place. Uh, we are going to cut this out with scissors but before we take the pattern off this little line here I'm going to cut with a scalpel because that is where one of the hands goes through. So I've got a ruler and a scalpel and I'm just going to carefully cut along that line. And I need to cut this out twice because I'm making it for two separate figures. We also have this piece here which is the hood so I'm going to stick that on and we need to cut that out twice as well. So let's get cutting and then we can actually start constructing these capes. <laughs> Now everything's cut out we can start sewing so we're going to uh, start with this hood and you can see here on the pattern it is to be folded in half and then we've got to sew a sort of slightly curved line towards the back of it so I'm just going to fold that over like that. Really the easiest thing to do with this is just to sort of hold your thumb like that and follow the curve of your thumb. So I've got some uh, thread already put on a needle here and this is the same sort of grey that I'm using for the fabric. And I'm going to sew along there and I'll do that on both of the hoods. With both of those now sewn I can do a little bit of trimming because there is a bit of excess fabric just here at the back so I've got a pair of scissors here and I'm just going to carefully trim around that. It's not particularly necessary to do but I think it sort of makes the uh, hood sit a bit better on the figure so we'll do that on both of these hoods and then we can get on with uh, starting to sew the main part of the cape. There you go, simple as that. Now we come to the main part of the cape where it starts to get a little bit complicated. So this is the uh, pattern bit that we've cut out and this is the inside of the material. If we turn it over you can see this is the material finish that we want on the outside. So what we're going to do is fold it so that we'll be sewing on the inside of it. So you can see this little notch here. What I've got to do is fold it so that that lines up just like that and then we just need to sew along that little edge there. Then once that is sewn we then do the same on the other little notch so we'll fold that like that and we'll just sew along that little angle there and we'll start to have something that is forming the cape. Once those two bits are done we can then start attaching the hood and it will actually start to look properly like a cape. So let's uh, just sew these two little uh, wedge pieces together and then I'll show you the next stage.
Now it's time to uh, join these two parts together and you can see this is still uh, the uh, inside is on the outside but if we turn this around you can start to see it's going to form uh, the right sort of cape shape. So we'll turn that back around and then we need to take one of the little hoods that we've made. So this is the little hood piece and I'm going to turn that so that it is the right side sticking out. And then we take the back edge where we have sewn it and we need to line that up with the middle of this section here. So you can see on the pattern I put a line down the middle. That section is what we need to line the middle of uh, this little hood up with. So I'm going to just put that about there, touch the two good surfaces together, so the two outside surfaces together. And then we're going to sew along the edge. In fact, I'm going to sew towards the right first, which is the sort of shorter edge of the uh, cape. And I'm just going to sew to the end there and tidy it all up. And then I'm going to sew along the other edge. It just seems easier to do the shorter edge first and make sure it's all lined up. It may be that the front of the hood is a little bit long and we have to trim some of that off. But uh, I've left it a little bit long for that very reason, just because it's so hard to get everything to line up. So let's sew along this edge and then we'll turn it all around and sew the other way around. And then we can start actually joining the cape together. So there we go, that is uh, one side of the hood sewn on. You can see if I turn it out the other way, you can see the hood is attached. So we now go to the other side and we're going to do exactly the same, but sew along that way. And then once we get to the end of the, uh, the hood, you can see that there is more cape sticking out. And we then have to sew that back onto uh, this side here and join the whole thing together. So let me get the uh, hood bit sewn on, then I'll show you how to fold it to sew the last two bits together. So there you go, that is the uh, hood sewn in. Now we need to actually join everything together. So we have this longer piece of fabric on this side, which is the sort of the flap that goes underneath. So when we fold this uh, back round the right way, it'll be folded inside. So this piece we need to join over to here. So we sort of had to fold it so that the uh, hood part is hidden inside. And then that just has to fold about to there. It's a little bit awkward to do this. This is one of the more, more complicated capes that I have made. So we just have to do a few little stitches there just to make sure everything is joined together because the rest of this flap is just sort of folded inside. So let me sew those two pieces together, make sure everything is actually lined up, which I think it is. So let's sew those in together and then we can turn the cape the uh, right way round and it should all line up. So here is a Dan Holland figure. Let's test this out. We've got to turn it the right way out. So the hood should be now at the top like that. That little bit should flap underneath. So what we've got, you can see there's a little slit there, which is for one arm to come through. This fold here is where the other arm should come through. And then obviously his head should go into the hood. So uh, let's line this up and see what happens. So there's his arm, there's his head. Look at that, that has worked really well. That's a really nice fit. I think I'm uh, pretty happy with that one. I do much prefer the color. It's just that little bit darker than the uh, prototype I made. Right, I've just got to finish this second one. So let me sew the hood on this second one. We can try that on the Kate McRae figure, see what that looks like. But I'm very happy with uh, how that has turned out. P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. And here via the miracle of editing is cape number two. So that's basically the same cape. I haven't done any sort of uh, scaling differences because the uh, female figures in these uh, Mego lines are a little bit uh, sort of smaller in size. But this cape actually seems to be quite universal. So there's the cape on uh, Kate McRae and there's the cape on Dan Holland. I think they are looking 
really pretty good. Now the next job is to make a sort of silver faceplate that must cover their faces completely. And I've been thinking about this for a long time and I have a few little ideas and a few things to uh, test out to uh, see what will work. So uh, let's try and make some uh, silver face uh, masks to uh, cover up the human faces on these figures. I've been thinking about this for a long time and I've gone through a whole load of different sort of versions and I think I've finally come up with a couple that may work which we are going to be trying today. My first initial thought was to use something like a, a screw cover. So this is a screw cover. You would sort of screw this uh, onto uh, something and then the uh, white part of it clips over the top. And I've got a few of those and they sort of work, but they're not really the right shape. You can see they're going to be really wide. They're also not very curved. They're very cheap to buy. So I bought a whole load of these and chances are I'm going to use them for a DIY project. But yeah, that was my first idea didn't really work. Next up, I thought, oh, actually, I've seen something that looks very similar to this. And it is, in fact, this, which is our packets of uh, pills. These are um, headache tablets. And every time you uh, pop out a headache tablet, you are left with this little uh, dome. I was thinking, oh, well, actually, that's pretty good. So this is a packet of uh, paracetamols. I just cut one of those out and you can see this is the uh, sort of shape you get. It's slightly better. I've had to uh, sort of curve the bottom of it and we can do a little test fit. It does look sort of right. It's a bit awkward to get in because it's really sort of thin plastic but that with a bit of chrome paint on it just let me pop that in the place that's not actually not looking too bad it's not quite oval enough and you can see it does quite clearly look like a pill packet to me but it was a sort of a good guess and sometimes you just have to uh, try these things so that was another go then i realized there are actually lots of different uh, pill packets so uh, there are some like this not quite sure what the pills were in these can't actually read that but these look pretty good because they're already silver so i cut one of those out I stuck a little bit of elastic to the back of it to make this little face plate. And that, again, is not too bad. It's really awkward to get on the figure when it's got the cape on. So let me bring in another uh, remains of a uh, Dan Holland here. And you can see that sort of clips over. It's not the greatest, but it does sort of work. And I thought that was, yeah, that's getting closer. Then I uh, posted a picture for my uh, Patreons to uh, see. And that there was a suggestion from Heath that uh, he'd got these things, which are little uh, plastic pipettes. I think they're used for airbrushes. He said the top of those looks pretty good as well. So uh, he sent me a couple of those. And here's one that he has already cut down for me. And that makes a little face plate. Again, it does just about fit over, but it's not really going to do the job as well as I wanted. So they're the sort of ideas that I've gone through and these have all been rejected. Then I finally had an, a sort of a brainwave as to what I would just do as a child. And as a child, I used to use a lot of blue tack for sort of modifying toys. And so something like blue tack is what I was thinking, because you could just take a lump of this off and then just push it onto the face and sort of shape it until you've got something that is that sort of a dome shape. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. But rather than use blue tack, I'm going to use milliput and I'm going to actually make something that sort of sits on top of the face and it molds to it exactly out of milliput. We can then file and sand it down till it's really smooth and paint it with some chrome paint. But as well as that, I've got, got one other thing to try, which is going to be uh, new for me, which is I'm going to cast some resin. While I was on holiday recently in uh, Tokyo, I saw these and these are little molds for making jewellery and these are sort of resin molds. So uh, these are made out of uh, silicon rubber and you can see here what I saw, which was this and it's in a little oval shape. And I thought, ah, oh, that's pretty much perfect because it's about the right shape and it should just sort of fit over the face of the figure. So I'm going to make some little resin oval shapes as well. I've got some uh, UV activated resin. We can just pour that into that, activate it, and we should get a mould and a sort of shape very quickly. But before I do that, let's get on with the milliput. We'll make a little milliput version to go on these because that's going to take 24 hours to dry. So uh, let's get that done first. <laughs>
So I've just mixed up some milliput. I've shown this many times before. It's a two part uh, modeling clay. You mix it up, you can then sort of sculpt with it for a few hours and after 24 hours it's set solid. So this is what we're going to be using to uh, make the little masks. I've got uh, the figures here. I've also got a little bit of cling film and I'm just going to wrap the faces in cling film because I don't want the uh, milliput to stick to the faces but I do want it to get a rough shape of the uh, face. So a little bit of a uh, cling film just stuck over the top of the heads there should save them and we should still be able to uh, sculpt and make the right sort of shape. So let's get these all covered up just like that. Not quite sure how much uh, milliput I'm going to need so I will just uh, cut off a small section and uh, we'll just sort of get sculpting see what happens. While we wait for that miller put to dry, which as I say takes 24 hours, we can have a go at uh, making some with resin. So this is a tiny pot of uh, UV activated resin. This is a uh, clear resin. I have a UV light here and I picked up this mold, which is made for uh, jewellery sort of uh, making. You know, the idea is that you fill this with some resin, coloured resin or whatever, and put something in it just to make it look sort of interesting. My plan is to try and put a thin layer of uh, resin all around it so we don't uh, fill it completely. I'm hoping to get a sort of just a slight maybe sort of one or two millimeter thick version of that shape that we can then do a little bit of modification to and paint it. But um, yeah I've never really tried this so this is all new to me. It looks fairly simple as I say this is just UV resin. I've got to drop that in there and I'll just sort of pour it around, put it under the light and uh, see what happens. It may or may not work but it was uh, worth a try. This was incredibly cheap to buy. This was bought from essentially a pound shop in uh, Japan. So each of these things cost me a pound. I think the uh, UV light cost me slightly more but the resin and this little mould were incredibly cheap. So let's just give it a go. Right, it's now a day later and everything has had time to set. So these are the little uh, resin pieces that I've made and I'm pretty pleased with how those are looking. In fact, if I bring in a figure here, you can see they do sit quite nicely over the face. They have a strange sort of magnifying effect at the moment, but by the time we paint those chrome, they may work well. So I'm uh, very hopeful with those. They need a little bit of sanding and fine tuning on the back. They're a little bit rough around the edges, but I've made quite a few of them just because I wasn't sure if they would work or not, or if I got the right sort of depth. But yeah, they're looking pretty hopeful. And then we have the uh, Milliput ones here, which are still stuck on the figures. These have been allowed to dry for 24 hours. I'm hoping we can just pull off that backing like that. And then they should still fit quite snugly on the figures. Yeah, not too bad. Again, those need a lot of sanding. So I'm going to do a load of old sanding now. I've got various uh, nail files here. So I'm going to sand those down. And I've also got some thousand grit sandpaper because we want these to be almost sort of mirror smooth, really, because the paint I'm going to use requires a very smooth surface. It may be I even spray these with a gloss spray first. But yeah, I can see that's actually not too bad. They certainly fit very well. Let's try this one as well. Take the backing off. Again, yeah, that's quite a snug fit. OK, let's do a little bit of filing and that sort of sanding. Then we can get to painting and seeing if these actually look any good. After a little bit of sanding and then a quick coat of uh, a gloss paint, I'm really happy with how these uh, milliput versions have turned out. I'm now going to give them a coat of paint and I'm going to be using this stuff, which is uh, the uh, Mirror Chrome from Stuart Semple. I find this gives a really good chrome result and it's very easy to use. You can paint it onto any surface. You don't have to use black gloss as an undercoat. You can use any gloss. That's why I've got white here because that's the only can of uh, spray paint I've got. And I haven't bothered painting 
using these ones, the little uh, resin ones, because I think they are shiny enough as is, and I'm hoping that this will just cover it. So we're going to put a quick coat of that over all of these, and then we'll be able to test them and see which ones work the best. At the moment, I'm actually thinking that the Milliput ones will work uh, the nicest. They're certainly going to fit the figures really snugly and should fit inside the hoods. These ones will look good, but I'm not sure they'll actually stay in place. So um, let's get this uh, mirror chrome on and see what the end result looks like. It's now the moment of truth. Everything has had time to dry it and I've ended up with some really nice looking little uh, chrome face plates. These are the uh, ones that are made out of resin so uh, those have actually turned out pretty nice. Not quite sure if they will fit but they do look very good. There's a nice shine to them and they do have the right sort of shape. So uh, let's give one of these a try. Here we have uh, Dan Holland. I'm hoping I can just sort of pop this in and get it to uh, fit onto the figure. It might be but it's actually best to uh, take the head out and then just drop this on. Maybe even we need to uh, hold these in place with a bit of blue tack because they're going to tend to sort of wobble around a bit. Let's just have a go and see if I can actually get one of these to stay in. All right, yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all. That's certainly in place. It's a little bit loose, but the effect is very nice indeed. That does give it a really nice sort of chrome faceplate. And it does make him look like the humanoid. Yeah, pretty happy with that one. So let's uh, try the other one. We'll try uh, the Kate McRae one, but we're actually going to try the one that I made out of Milliput. So again, I'm just going to take her head out and then we can get this little faceplate here. And as you can see, that's chromed up really nicely as well. So that's just the uh, white gloss paint on the underneath and then a quick coat of that uh, mirror paint. It really does make a very nice finish. Let's put this in and see what this one looks like. Oh right yeah that's uh, not bad at all. I actually think that looks a little bit better just because the faceplate is that little bit larger. That one you can see is a little bit on the small side but both of them work really remarkably well. In fact I'm going to swap this one out with the uh, one that I made out of Milliput. So let's just uh, take that faceplate out. So there's the Milliput version and again that should just fit quite snugly onto his head. If we rotate everything round, pop that in. Yeah, well I think there's very little to sort of uh, differentiate between the two really. The end result of both of them looks really nice. But I think the uh, Milliput ones will hold in place that little bit better because they have been specifically designed to uh, fit on the faces. That is really nice. I'm so pleased with how those have turned out. Let's take a look at them with some uh, of the other figures and see how they stand up. And here we go. Here are the uh, two figures. So we've got uh, Kate McRae and Dan Holland in their humanoid disguises. And I think the end result has really been worth all of the effort. It took quite a little time to uh, design a cape that fitted. And I think these capes actually do everything I wanted them to do. We've got access to both of the arms and they do look like they did in the movies. And I'm really actually quite pleased with the uh, grey material that I chose. If you look at images from the film they are actually this sort of uh, tone of grey. I always thought it was a bit darker maybe even sort of almost a black but I made a black version and I don't think it works at all. This sort of uh, medium to dark grey just sort of fits and it does make them fit really nicely with the rest of the figures that I have in my collection. Obviously the original version of the humanoid came with that sort of fawny brown colour cape. Not quite sure why they chose that colour but that's the one they went for. I think this grey actually works a whole lot better. And we have these little removable masks as well which again really do just sort of finish the look of and I'm so pleased with how well the uh, chrome paint has worked on these. They're lovely and shiny but they are removable as well so we can have the normal figures or we can have them in their humanoid disguises you can choose which way you want to display them. Although this project has taken a long time to do I'm so pleased with the results and these are going to look excellent with the rest of my collection and if you want to have a go at making these yourself I'm going to put the pattern that I've created available on toyploy.com so you can go and download that there and then either use a little bit of milliput to make a mask or if you have resin you could try making a resin version but I have to say I think the milliput versions work really nicely. So there you go that's it for this project. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and 
tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And if you've really enjoyed it and want to help support the channel, then why not think about becoming a Patreon or YouTube channel member? You get early access to all of my restoration videos and access to an exclusive video series called On the Cutting Mat. So have a think about that and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos.